Hi everyone, it's Janet here from ABG Asian Boss Girl, a podcast for the modern day Asian American woman, which I co-host with Mel and Helen. On our podcast, we talk about everything from our careers to our cultural identity, dating, relationships, mental health, um, anything that we think might also be interesting on a pop culture level. And recently we've noticed that the topic of self-care has been pretty pressing. You know, I think it makes a lot of sense given the last couple of years that we've had the world at large has been in a bunch of upheaval. Um, everyone's lives have been disrupted on a variety of different levels and in various ways. Um, I know that I have personally had a lot of conversations with friends and family who are just feeling burned out. Burned out physically, mentally, emotionally. And between Helen Mel and myself, we have also felt that as well. And we wanted to take this opportunity to share with you all a couple of the ways that we focus on our self-care. These are things that we do with the goal of restoring and renewing our well-being. So before we continue, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Bessie, for allowing us this opportunity to share with you all how we take care of ourselves. So one of my top easy go-to ways to re-energize myself is to get outside. There is nothing quite like getting fresh air, getting vitamin D from the sunlight, and moving my body around to get those endorphin lifts. In LA, I love hitting up Griffith Park trails for those beautiful mountain views, or I love going to the beach for those beautiful ocean views. The great thing about LA is that we're so close to both. Since it's the summertime here in LA, I've been heading to the beach more often recently. When I go to the beach, I like to start out with a run along the pavement or sidewalk. I'll usually go for about two to three miles on my jog while listening to music. And I'll usually end my jogs by going into the sand and walking up to the tides of the beautiful, refreshing ocean water. I'm sure my fellow LA residents feel me on how lucky we are and how wonderful it is to be able to go on these beautiful beach runs. But I'm pretty sure you can also feel me on how frustrating it can be and how messy it gets when you wanna walk along in the sand and walk along the water tide. I honestly have struggled to find a shoe that is both comfortable and supportive for when I wanna run around, but can also withstand the messiness of the sand and allow me to walk along the water tide by the beach. I was really excited when I discovered Vessi because it's a shoe that can handle all of these different settings. They slip on easily like a sock, the top seam provides the perfect amount of ankle support, and the sole molds to my foot. And when I want to walk along the tide, which we all know is one of the best parts of going to the beach, they are 100% waterproof. They're super easy to clean. You just rinse them off with water and you can wear them right away. And they're sustainably made with no animal byproducts, which is something that I've become pretty picky about with my shoes recently. If you're interested to try them out as well, check out the link in our description below and use our code to get $25 off your Bessie shoes. So I'm pretty sure most of you know by now that I am a regular meditator. Um, it is definitely something that has been essential to my being able to restore myself twice a day. I do uh, 20 minutes in the morning and then 20 minutes in the afternoon. So um, it's something that I can do really easily. Literally, I'm just sitting at my desk and I'm gonna take a break now and I just take my phone. I set the timer um, for about 20 minutes and I just sit here and do this. <sighs> that was nice. Another way that I restore and renew myself is through yoga. Um, I haven't been as consistent with it as I used to be, but I have found that I really enjoy doing really short sessions and just doing them from home. So literally, I'm in my home, this is my yoga mat, um, and I just get on my laptop and I'll do like a video for about like 20 minutes. You know, doing headstands, I've also found for me or any type of inversion is really good because I'm often sitting at my desk all day, so I get a lot of like tightness um, and just like, stress and tension that I hold in my shoulders. So getting to flip upside down for a little bit uh, actually really helps to relieve the tension there. Hi everyone, it's Mel. And by now you should know that I'm a big advocate and I'm a big fan of self-care because you know your girl needs it. So when I think of self-care, I actually divide into two parts. The first part is restore. And the second part is relaxation, which I def definitely spend more time in the relaxation part. But restore is as important. Restore for me is finding clarity in your life and processing your thoughts and emotions. Relaxation is exactly what you think it is. It's relieving and releasing the stress and tension from your mind and body. 
So what do I do in terms of restore? The one thing I actually been doing that has been new is I have deleted Instagram and other social media platforms off my phone, which honestly, as someone that works in social media for the past like five, maybe even 10 years now is really difficult because you're kind of attached to the app, right? One thing I've been doing is when I want to go in and check social, I give myself only 15 minutes a day to be on social media. So I go to my timer and I press start and then I just re-download Instagram and I'm on for 15 minutes to do whatever I want, to like view my stories, to scroll through or to post. And when the timer goes off, I stop what I'm doing, like a standardized test in high school and I delete the app. And that's helped me a lot. I've been giving back time to myself to do things that I actually truly value. So one thing I've been doing again is deleting social media and setting my boundaries with social media. The second thing I do for restoring is I journal. And you all know by now that I've been journaling for a while. I actually started back journaling in January and I haven't stopped since. And it's been extremely eye-opening and provide a lot of clarity in my life. So I do two kinds of journaling. The first thing I do is feature self journaling, which I got from Jen M. I saw how much it benefited her, so I wanted to give it a shot myself. And honestly, it has worked wonders. I do feature self journaling every morning and I answer six questions. So when I feature self journaling, I answer these six questions. I write down my affirmations and statements. How will you practice these new behaviors? I am grateful for. The person I'm becoming will experience more. I have an opportunity to be my future self today when I, and when I think about who I'm becoming, I feel blank. For me, these are little reminders just to help ground my day. The last thing I do is I do like long form journaling where I Google prompts that I want to answer and I just spend uninterrupted time journaling my thoughts for about an hour or two. And for me, the reason why I spend so much time doing this is not because I'm writing for two hours straight. I'm literally typing and I'm sitting and processing my thoughts and emotions as I go. Some prompts that I've been doing is I was writing down, what are my values in life? What are some activities that generally bring me joy? And what are some activities and things that make me feel really confident? So those are some three prompts that I've been journaling long form to help me process out my thoughts and kind of help me take my mind to the next level that I want it to be. Um, so those are some things I've been doing for Restore. I want to share with you what I've been doing lately in terms of relaxation. You all know that I love relaxing with my favorite Korean dramas and just watching a bunch of shows, but an activity that my therapist recommended, she recommended me to color. So I've been in coloring lately because, you know, as a kid, I did love arts and crafts and drawing and coloring, I don't know, it just brings me back to my adolescent years, but it's been really therapeutic. So what I do is I just put on my lo-fi playlist and I just color. I'm pretty good. So I color this one, I colored, this one, I'd definitely recommend this activity. All right, so I shared a couple activities that I do for Restore and a new activity I've been doing for relaxation. But one thing I'd highly recommend if you guys have the time is to take a solo retreat by yourself to just get away. For me, I just went to Joshua Tree recently, which I shared in our last ABG vlog, and I just came back feeling so rejuvenated. But the main thing I do is I try to find a new place that I'd never gone to and just kind of embrace the beauty of something new. So I, when I was in Joshua Tree, I saw this incredible sunset that just like left me feeling so thankful for putting myself outside my comfort zone and just witnessing this beauty of nature and everything else. And so I really recommend, you know, taking a solo retreat and exploring a new place if you can. Um, so those are some things I do for self-care. Hello, self-care video. To be honest, I have not been doing a good job at self-care. Um, I am 25, going on 26 weeks pregnant. This is what a 25, 26 week belly looks like. There's a part of me that feels very guilty about not fully feeling like I am, you know, doing a lot of self-care activities, not just for myself, but for this child that I'm carrying. But at this point, there's just so much to do before this baby comes and not a lot of time left. But also with ABG, um, we are working a lot behind the scenes to try and make sure that when it comes to December, January timeframe, I am able to take ample time off to be fully away and present with the baby. So lots of work done behind the scenes. I feel very behind on just making sure that I will become a good mom. I think that's the part that makes me sad that time is running out and I haven't done I haven't done classes, I haven't finished a book yet, I haven't watched enough YouTube videos. Like 
I don't know, I just feel very behind and to be honest, like self-care is the last thing that comes, kind of comes to mind. It's a never-ending to-do list with very limited time left. It almost feels like I'm just like failing on like all fronts, which... <sighs> Damn it. With such limited time left, you know, I am in the headspace of trying to be present with my family, with my friends, because this identity of the person that I've always known is going to change completely and inevitably in three months time so i'm trying to do the most i can with the limited time that i have but at the same time i know i need to be balancing the self-care side of things all right so it's it's definitely like a tug and pull of having quiet time for myself for the things that i need to do for myself and also just like living out the rest of this pre-baby period of my life that i will never get back And I feel so incredibly grateful and lucky to have this healthy baby growing inside of me. I've always wanted to become a mom. I didn't know that in this period of time leading up to motherhood, like this is what it would feel like. And it just feels like I'm rushing into a lot of things right now. And instead of resting, I am overdoing. And instead of self-care, I am checking off my to-do list. So I don't know, I guess you can't have the best of both worlds and I feel like I'm like rambling right now, but uh, this video, yeah, is really hitting me in the face and letting me know that I have not done a lot of self-care. <laughs> so with that said, and this random crying session that I was not expecting, um, I've decided to really try and invest uh, time for just myself today um, and to give myself some rest. In an ideal world, this is what my self-care day looks like. So this morning, I am catching up on Bachelor in Paradise, episode six, which for those of you all who know, this episode's wild. But usually in the morning, I am listening to my two favorite podcasts, which are Snacks Daily and Up First by NPR. Those two podcasts usually give me the spread of what's going on in the world, so I'm aware outside of my home, what's happening in this world, and that usually fulfills my morning needs. But I'm gonna listen to that later on. This morning, I am getting ready and, you know, it's self-care day. It's a guilty pleasure day, I guess. But starting off with Bachelor in Paradise. feeling a lot better from earlier today and right now I'm getting my water in usually every morning I will be standing here by my fridge and just like chugging down two glasses of water I'll be like just like that <laughs> Trying to figure out what soup to make today with my mom. Okay, okay. She put all of this together when she was here visiting, and I have not been good about making soup. This one? Yeah? Yeah. My mom is very big on Chinese traditional herbal soup. As you can see, she has prepackaged for me a bunch of frozen soup kits. Basically, all I had to do is take out a packet of meat, take out a packet of the herbally goods, and she's like, that's it. I've done all the work for you. I've washed the meats. All you have to do is defrost it and put it into this pot. It's a soup pot, which she bought from a Chinese grocery store, but she bought the pot, she bought all of the ingredients, washed it, prepped it, and all that, put it in the fridge, and she's like, you gotta make soup. Soup is very, very important. In Chinese culture, it is like the pot of gold, and it does have a lot of ingredients that are really good for the baby. So the soup that I'm making today has chicken, pork, sea cucumber, fish belly, red dates, ginger, um, something that look, looks like dried longan, and a few other things that I, I don't really know what they are, but it's good for the baby and my own health as well. So I'll be making that today. 
Hi, I was wondering if you um, had availability for a prenatal massage this Saturday? Prenatal for Saturday, can you click that? Thank you. Yay! Just booked the massage for myself! It feels so good. <sighs> the soup is ready. It's been four hours. Oh yeah. Oh, that is so good. Tastes like, mom, are you here? Are you here making soup for me? Oh, it warms the heart. It warms the belly. This is a very good bowl of soup. To close out this video, I think what I've learned from today is that we have such limited time in our day, in our lives, in the moments before our identity fully changes. And as of today, I'm really going to try and start saying no to things that are just not vital to my own well-being or my babies. And I think it's going to be hard because naturally I want to be out there, I want to be experiencing life, I love experiencing experiences and learning and growing and all of these things but I need to remind myself that slowing down is part of living life too. I think once I can fully accept that then I will be a lot happier. Thanks for tuning in everyone and if you haven't yet please hit the thumbs up on this video and give us a follow on our YouTube page Asian Boss Girl. And let us know in the comments what your self-care habits are. Make sure you are taking care of yourselves and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Oh, why is that so hard? And there's this, okay, airplane, cool. My dirty ass. And <laughs> the baby just kicked, no. Oh. Maybe it feels me crying. Sir, baby. Just booked the massage for myself. Oh. Were they still on that call? Oops. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. Okay. Holy moly, why is that so heavy? Also, I am noticing that my acne is running wild right now. But you know what? I'm too lazy to go up and get some foundation. This is the reality of pregnancy, okay?